the descendants of Hamites today. So these one-to-one correlations, Sonetta, are problematic. The idea that like there's Ham and then there's pure Hamitic bloodline, because I'm not saying you're saying that, but I feel like that's the way some people approach it. If you're looking at the children of Noah coming off the ark, and that's sort of the bottleneck that begins everybody else after Adam, so the, antidil- the, the post-Diluvian world after the flood, right? There's all kinds of people going all kinds of places. Now, in general, the sons of Ham seem to settle in what we become Africa in general. But they also appear some went to the, to the land of Canaan. But that also the sons of Shem were in the land of Canaan. And you look and you see dispersal and moving and migration. And we're talking about ancient history. We're talking about a long time. So I say that as a general thing, we see during the biblical times, the land that would become called Africa is populated with the sons of hand in general. But the idea that now there's a one-to-one correlation is just crazy. And I think DNA shows this. You know, you got these, because the intermixing and stuff, even in the Bible, is clearly present. Esau married Egyptian women. Even during the days of the Israelites, after they got out of the Exodus, you see people who had an Egyptian father. You see that Moses married an Ethiopian. The, right there in the Bible, there's the mixing, right? And it appears in Numbers 11, when Miriam and Aaron brought a beef, part of the reason was they didn't seem to like his black wife. When Miriam and Aaron brought a beef, part of the reason was they didn't seem to like his black wife. Because they didn't seem to like his black wife. I mean, because they didn't seem to like his black wife. I mean, it's... They didn't seem to like his black wife. I mean, it any evidence that ancient Israelites were black. So I'm not saying ancient Israelites were black. So for them to talk about, oh, look, he's saying black skin. Remember, I'm not, I'm saying that that's not true. Remember, I'm not, I'm saying that that's not true. Remember, I'm not. I'm saying that that's not true. I mean, you know, what's crazy about these Hebrew Israelites like Sakari, they go to Genesis 25, 25, look at Esau and say, look, he's described as ruddy. That means he's red. That means a father of white people. And yet David and now these princes are described as ruddy as well. And so is Solomon, I do believe. So, here's the verse. Here's the verse. Verse 8. Their visage, old KJV way to say face, is blacker than a coal. Now, first of all, I've heard people try to say, oh, yeah, they're... No one is really blacker than a coal like that. And notice, it's a new state. Because what's the very next verse say? Their face is... And by the way, why would only their face be that color? Right? But that interpretation makes sense. I see what he's saying. Like I'm going out here talking about... I'm, I'm putting up on my own show something that says, Oh, uh, 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 black skin is dirty. I don't even think the ancient Israelites were black. I don't even think the ancient Israelites were black. I don't even think the ancient Israelites were black. I don't even think the ancient Israelites were black. I don't even think I the want to give all the praises black. and the honor to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, Rechaha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone, also a sincere Shalom to the elect. Oh, okay, Shalom to your sisters and followers of the truth. And let me say Shalom again, Shalom to the elect. I want to go on this video here um, with vocab and serenetta. Um, vocab is used in ways secretly. It's not even secretly the way he's speaking. If he's a pure Calvinist Christian, then that might be my next video on the Calvinists of Saint Augustine. That's a different video. If he if he's about Christianity and promoting love, why is he making it a race issue? Or let me say, why is he making it even a color issue? And let's say he's trying to defend the fact that it's not about color. You just heard it in the uh, the clip. He talks fast in his political interview, but you heard it in the clip that he doesn't even believe the Israelites were so-called black. But the Christian narrative from the beginning is God loves all, no matter what color, 
who you were, where you're from, it doesn't matter. But the people in the land today can claim heritage and say, okay, well, this is us. And that's all right. And he shies away from that. So the reason why we bring out the fact of the, uh, the uh, scriptures on uh, the Israelites being black, and I'll prove through the spirit, 100% proves that the Israelites were so-called black. The reason why we bring that out is because what they've done in the Renaissance why would they have to repaint an image? Why would they have to redo images? Why would they destroy icons and, and make new images? If the old Im images was authentic. So what we're doing when we say the Israelites are so-called black is not trying to build our egos up, so to speak. We're just speaking the truth of the Most High. We're breaking those lies that was taught. Okay? And brought out through the Jesuit church and Calvinism and the Roman Catholics okay so this is why we're bringing out the fact about the skin color so let's go to lamentation he also talked about the um, the identity of the uh, Israelites and that they were just diverse and all over the place you had our people who dwelt in borders and lands and different uh, different lands but you had an inheritance of people who dwelt in particular lands Okay, at, at one particular time. Like today in America, you got different people of multitudes and nations and tongues here, but you have one nation of people who runs it, who owns it. Okay? They're what they were given. Okay, let's go to Lamentations uh, 4 and 7. Her Nazarites were purer than snow, they were whiter than milk, right? Which he admits that that has nothing to do with skin color. They were more ruddy in body than rubies, which he admits the ruddy is brown, but actually is so-called black, which is a dark, dark brown, okay? Their rubies, their polishings of sapphire, okay? So when you, he also going to the, um, the complexion of the, the uh, polishings. Uh, when you look at, when the scripture says in Revelation uh, 1 and 14, with Yahweh appearance, uh, it says feet like, was like unto fine brass if they burnt in a furnace being burnt in a furnace when you really go into that and look that up the fine brass is a dark color I don't know why I don't know how it changed to make it look more goldish or whatever but when you look at fine brass it's a darker color okay just wanted to bring that out also goes on it says they're vicious is blacker than coal right they are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is a withered. It has become like a stick. Okay, so he can make an argument there. Okay, that the, um, the Israelites, when it says they were whiter than snow, but then it says they're vicious, which is their visual. Okay, let's go to vicious. Let's see what vicious means. Meaning their appearance, I believe, or something like that. Their shape, form, outline, figure, appearance. There you go. Okay, when you go to um, we're blacker than coal, okay, H2821. Okay, let's see where that is, H2821. Now, we go on the story of Moses, when Moses put his hand in his bosom, and when he, and he came and pulled it out, he was leprous, right? Then when he put it back in and pulled it out, it turned as the other flesh. So what was the other flesh? If Moses was already like a white, whitish white person, so-called white, and let me say not bright white, but white, then that wouldn't be such a miracle. He would have had to have been darker. But we'll get into that to prove Moses was a so-called black man as well. Okay, this word darker means to become dark, grow dim, okay? Be darkened, be black, be hidden. Okay, so going on your visions, your continents, right? So now you have to show me any so-called white person who have become dark or light, light, light brown, per light skinned person, super light person who has become dark. And let me just say white person who has become dark because of, ha because of famine, hunger, being upset. Show me where anybody of that complexion uh, has become dark. It goes on to say to grow dark, to have a dark color, to have a dark color, to grow dim, to make dark cause to be dark, okay? 
to be confused. Okay, so, okay, let's see for argument's sake, you wanted to fight with that. Let's go here to um, Phineas, okay? Exodus 6 and 25, I've done a lesson on this before. And Eleazar, okay, Aaron's son took him one of the daughters of uh, Putil to wife, and she bare him Phineas. These are the heads of the fathers of the Levites according to the families, their families. So, when you look at the word Phineas, H6372, it means the mouth of brass. Okay? Mouth of brass. When you go into the um, definition of the mouth of brass, here's the etymology. The etymology, the original meaning of the name Phineas is not immediately clear. Now, all other, I'm, I'm going to the, I'm kind of throwing admonition at the, the, the uh, Christians, vocab and the Christians. Because all the other scholars clearly know what it means. This person is saying it's not clear. But anyway, BDB Theological Dictionary suggests that it is translated, transliteration of the Egyptian name Phineas. Phinehasi, meaning the Negro, or more specifically, the bronze colored one, okay? In the Old Testament, um, then it goes on to say, the question is raised, why on earth anyone would make the mistake, the tint of a Negroid skin with that of bronze? Well, when you look at true bronze, true bronze is dark. Thank, thanks to white supremacy who lightened it up because the history has already already proved that the uh, so-called melanated, as they say, melanated people were people of bronze, okay? Fine brass is another form of bronze. But somehow they made it look lighter. Still has color. See, they, all you got to do is do whatever you need to do to fit the narrative of what you're trying to push, okay? So, Phineas, when you look that up, is the um, bronze-colored one, the Egyptian name. So now, we know that Phineas was the uh, son of, of Aaron and the grandson of uh, Eleazar, and Aaron was the oldest brother of Moses. So you check the lineage. So Aaron and uh, Moses was brothers, they were both so-called black, right? So-called black, because Phineas was uh, uh, the Negro. So how do you get out of that? So this vocab is saying, well, they got mad because of the uh, Miriam. I mean, Moses had the Egyptian woman or whatever. It was because of the nationality. You were dealing with two dark nations, and here uh, vocab is the main one that said. The Israelites are the one who's trying to make it about uh, a skin color when it never really was about that. So why did he just make it about that? Let's go to Zephaniah 1 and 1. Um, it says, The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah. Came unto Zephaniah. I'll make this quick. The son of Cush. Cush. The son of... Uh, uh, Gedaliah, Gedaliah, and the son of Amariah, uh, Am Amariah, and the son of Hezekiah, and the days of jo jo Josiah, Salakia, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah. So don't try to say another nation because it goes on down. It showed his lineage uh, from Judah, right? So let's see what Zephaniah means, okay? which came from Zephaniah 86846 86846 let's see what it says uh, they can't stand with us man Zephaniah equals um, Slakia not, Zep not Zep uh, Zephaniah um, let's go uh, Slakia Cush let's see what Cush means well, we know Zeph Zephaniah, Yahweh, uh, has treasured. Okay, but let's go to um, Cush. H3570. Okay, H3570. What does it mean? What does it say? Um, let's repeat it. 
Strong's H3570, Kushi, Kushi. The son of Kushi, right? And it equals their blackness. That's what it says. But we know how they do. They try to switch it up, talking about their continent, you know? Clearly it says here their blackness. I mean, we get we see over and over and over again. Uh, we're proving time and time again um, who the Israelites were and what was their color. And you know what? We have, wouldn't have to go through this fight if during the time of the Renaissance they didn't come in and screw everything up and change the uh, images anyway. Okay, it says here another definition, Kushi or Ethiopian equals C cushion um, their blackness. Right? So, there you have it. When you look at it, in, to summarize it, when you look at it in a nutshell, when you look at Aaron, uh, the son of uh, uh, Aaron, when you look at Phineas, Phineas, through the Bible scholars, white scholars, have admitted that he was a Negro, which means if he was a Negro, Aaron was a Negro, so-called. Moses was a so-called Negro, so-called, we know he's a Levite, but it would have been so-called Negroes, which mean, Negro just means black, right? We, we can see that. And all through the scriptures, it talks about the complexion and it really doesn't have a need to really talk about complexion only to describe a particular continent or, or what they're going through to grow darker. Song of Solomon says he's black and beautiful right so he was describing and like David said he was ruddy so it's just describing when you're dealing with the complexion of healthiness and looking good or in suffering your, your skin it's telling you here that your skin play a role. Remember, the skin is the largest organ on the body. So it plays a role on your appearance and your health and how you live it. That's why some people who, who are sick, they, their, their appearance is not the same as a healthier person. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.